with this video, I will give you my personal list of top 10 skills that make a good SAP EWM consultant. And I am sure that some of them are not what you would expect. My name is still Hendrik and this is another video of the series working as a SAP EWM consultant. I decided to cut this video into two pieces where the first part, so this video here, focuses on the rather technical functional stuff, the skills that I call the foundation. And the second part with the skills number six to 10 is rather softer stuff, which we then add on top of this functional technical foundation. Before we go into detail, I would like to emphasize that from those skills, I personally have not perfected any of them. And this video is not supposed to be me teaching you what I am perfect in, what I can do and what I think you should be doing. You know, this is just me personally reflecting what I've learned over the past 15 years, what I was faced with and what I think was and is useful for me in terms of capabilities and skills. At the end of the day, this is anyhow a journey which does not have a fixed end at some point. Uh, you cannot, you, you will not be ready or you will not be done as an EWM consultant. This is an ongoing journey. There is no end to this journey. And I think it's a good idea for all of us to enjoy the ride instead of focusing where we could be and want to be at some point. Skill number one on my list is intra logistics and business processes. And this is most probably the most underrated but essential skill. I do think that without a good understanding of intra logistics processes in terms of material flow within the warehouse, but also in terms of business processes that are triggering or pushing those material flows, there is no way that you run a successful EWM project, at least not in a role as a lead consultant, for instance. And I am convinced that you need to cover this within the first years as an EWM consultant. This is also why I highlighted this in the video about how to start with SAP EWM, which I linked here again. And this is really not rocket science. Now the core of intra logistics and warehouse processes are more or less the same also in different industries. Now you always have incoming processes, outgoing processes, you might integrate production. Of course, there are a lot of differences, a lot of variants. Don't get me wrong. But once you have seen a handful of different warehouses from inside, you already have a good map in your head that can derive from those experiences then uh, relate to um, like other industries, other warehouses. But the problem is that, that many people like finishing their studies, learning the theoretical part, never have had the chance to see a warehouse from inside and then jump into the EWM consulting business. And this is a big disadvantage for, for you or for those people who are in those situations. But it's always possible to get that exposure also when you did not have the chance to work as an intern or in a part time job while you are studying, you can still do that afterwards I do an internship for a couple of weeks in different areas of the warehouse, hire or, or apply for a part time job. Or even if you are already in the consulting business, it's always possible for you to raise your hand in case it is about supporting, testing, helping your customers on site and breathing as much warehouse air as possible. Point number two is a no brainer. Who could have thought that EWM specific functional knowledge, the, the core skill that you need in every phase of your EWM project are starting the sales process where you need to be able to differentiate between a standard feature or a requirement that fits the standard feature or requirement that does not fit a standard feature in order to estimate the effort. Then during the design phase, implementation phase, where you design a solution, design processes that are in an 
optimal world as close as possible um, with the standard functionality and then in the like realization phase where you really get your hands on to the system obviously you need to know what to do in order to configure the stuff and then later also doing uh, ramp up phase training hypercares when you're working with the end users specifically when you communicate your knowledge about the system how do you get that easiest way of course is while working with the system hands-on in the projects but i think it's required that you study the theory now you need to study the standard books inside out read the blogs read the online help read the help text in the system and do that in the best case along with the requirements from the projects that's how i do that uh, i'm faced with a project where i know i have to set up a quality inspection process in the inbound and i study specifically the theory for that one or i know i have uh, two-step picking on the outbound side and i study everything that i can find around a two-step picking process because this is the only way where you make knowledge really sticky and when you uh, have the theory on one side and then the practical application on the other side in parallel so point number two ewm specific functional knowledge before we proceed, just a quick reminder that this channel lives from you subscribing and of course hitting the like button. So please do that real quick before we proceed with the next point. Thanks a lot and back to Hendrik. Point number three on my list is ABAP. And when I say ABAP, I am not saying that I think a good EWM consultant need to be able to write code. I have met many consultants during the past 15 years, including myself, who at some point wanted to, to learn coding, to be able to write their enhancements on their own. I do think that it is almost impossible to become a good EWM consultant at the same time as becoming a good EWM developer. And I also think that there are some very smart, very intelligent guys out there who can actually do that. But uh, for most of us, including myself, it's simply not possible because you only have a limited amount of time on a given day in a given week or year in your life and there's only a limited capacity over here so to become good in any of those disciplines it takes uh, a lot of effort a lot of time and with an average brain power like i personally have it it's simply not possible in one lifetime so I do think as an EWM consultant, you should be able to read ABAP coding. So for that, you need to understand the basic concepts. Uh, so if you open a report, a class, a method, a function module, and look at the coding, you should be able to understand what's happening there. You should be able to uh, use the debugger. Now this is essential to help yourself during testing, during troubleshooting, and to potentially also search within the standard coding for potential spots for enhancements for additional information that you do not get from books online help and so on and so on now you have seen that maybe in some of my videos from the reveal sap wm series where i do detailed in-depth analysis of the standard coding to reveal hidden features that are not explained anywhere in the documentation and there are a lot of those and having uh, some basic understanding and a skill to read the standard code helps you over here and last but not least it will help you writing specification and then communicating with your colleagues from the development teams the more technical details you can add to your specifications, the easier it becomes for the developer to understand what you actually want to achieve with your enhancements. Point number four is end-to-end -end processes, including SAP ERP. 
And the reason for that is that there's rarely a uh, intra logistics process which does not have its start or its end somewhere in an ERP module. And I'm personally convinced that you will not be able to define and configure an optimal intra logistics warehousing flow without having the understanding of the end to end process flow in terms of the business as such, but also in terms of document flow from SAP perspective. And that is why you need to have a core or basis understanding of the core ERP modules, which are interacting with SAP EWM. This means I do think that a good EWM consultant has a good understanding about at least uh, MM and SD so that you understand what's happening before stuff arrives in the warehouse and that you understand what's happening to trigger a movement outside of the warehouse and the things that happen once the goods have left the warehouse. That also means that you should have a basis understanding about how to integrate production processes. So the PP component and the different ways of integrating uh, this component with SAP EWM. The same is true for QM, uh, whether the latter is not my personal favorite. I study this in a very opportunistic way, only if I'm faced with this in the projects. It's just not my favorite area. We can discuss about TM, uh, transportation management, part of the supply chain management suite from SAP. I think it's helpful to have a rough understanding about the processes and the way it integrates with EWM. I do think, however, and this is not necessarily true for MM and SD and maybe also not for PP, but that varies from project to project. I think when you are faced with a project where TM is implemented alongside with EWM, you most probably have TM experts within your project team. So I doubt that you will be faced with customers expecting from you that you are an expert in EWM as well as TM. And again, we end up at the point where I think our lifetime is somewhat limited and it will be very tough for you to become an expert in EWM as well as TM at the same time in the same life. Skill number five. The last one for this video is visualizing processes. And when I say visualizing processes, I mean visualizing processes. I'm not talking about communicating together requirements and stuff like that, that we do around working with processes. This is something we will tackle in the second part of this video. I'm really talking about visualizing. Working with EWM is all about working with processes. The process is always in the core of what we are talking about, what we are configuring, what we are implementing. And a core skill of an EWM consultant is to visualize those processes in a way that all stakeholders that you communicate with can understand what you are talking about. And this can be achieved by drawing those process, it can be business processes, material flow processes, logical processes in the system. And an essential skill is to draw them in a way that people can relate to them, can follow them in a structured, standardized and consistent way. And this is also not rocket science. There are lots of standards out there, UML, BPMN, you can them up online. There's free documentation out there. And there are a lot of free tools, uh, draw.io for instance, or some of you might have Visio already uh, included in their uh, Microsoft Office license. And you can look at the standards, you can study that, you can practice, 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 and then at some point it becomes some kind of a routine that you apply when you work with the processes and try to visualize them for your different stakeholders. Yeah, these were the five skills 
that I wanted to present to you today the five skills that I think are required to become a good EWM consultant from functional technical perspective. And based on what I explained to you within the last 15 minutes, I think you understand now why I call this a foundation. Yeah, the, the functional technical stuff, you cannot become a good consultant without that. And on top of this foundation, we will now put some soft skills that basically shape you as an EWM consultant and help you in the different tasks, the different situations that you are faced with in this job. I'm looking forward already to this second part of the video and I hope to have you back here then with me. Until then, I wish you happy learning and a lot of success in your projects. Thanks and goodbye.